My name is Andrew Stotts, and I'm here today to talk about careers in finance with Tanya Torani. Tanya, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you're doing, besides being at home for the COVID stuff. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I think it's, it's a privilege to be on the show, starting with, because... I think this is the first time I'm wearing a formal suit for something after a while. So it's been almost 15 days in quarantine and life has been crazy. But um, I think it's, it's, it's very important to, you know, have access to such podcasts. So while even before coming to the interview, mm. I thought I should have a look on what, you know, information was available. And it was so interesting to see that, you know, people with two years of experience in finance versus people with 20 years in finance were talking about it mm. and just felt that wish I had access to such things before when I was making a career choice. So yeah, from an introduction perspective, I think of now I am working as a consultant in Capco, which caters to the financial services clients. And yes, I've, I've just recently moved to London, the financial center of the world. And it's, it's been a very interesting journey. Um, before that, I was in Barclays, spent four years of my career in Barclays. And even taking a few, uh, uh, I mean, few years back in time, I started my engineering in computer science in 2011 and then graduated in 2015. And again, was at that point of time where I had some career choices to make. So I had placements from Deloitte. I had a placement from Mu Sigma, which was into data science. And I also had an opportunity from Barclays as a technology analyst graduate. So more than, you know, making a choice of how will it impact my career in the long run, the only deciding factor that time, at least back, back in 2015 for me, was that, you know, it's closer to my house. The office is closer to my house. And, you know, that was how bizarre I would, you know, take a career decision. And luckily, I think Barclays gave me a graduate rotational program. So I think it is very important if you get an opportunity to move in different uh, domains within a financial services to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. So I think the graduate rotational program was a starting point in my journey. And I got for six months in compliance where I tried doing some data anal analysis. And then for the next six months, I think I was given an opportunity to work in investment banking. So I was trying to be a DevOps engineer, trying to automate the build and continuous integration uh, trade life cycle of, of the investment banking product that they had. Mm. And then finally, you know, tried moving towards corporate banking. So after the graduate rotational program was over, I think we could get a chance to explore more options or stay with what we already did. I got a chance again to rotate and get into corporate banking and, you know, get into the data and integration services for them. So, hmm. you know, it's been a roller coaster. So these not even five years of my career, I've been trying to see, explore, get my hands on with different parts of the bank. Yeah. It's interesting because um, I have a lot of students uh, who take, for instance, in my case, let's say the valuation masterclass and they're engineers and they say, I want to change my career. So they're already working in engineering type of field for maybe one to three to five years. And they're looking for kind of the, the way to transition from engineering into finance. And I'm just curious, kind of, what are your thoughts about that? You know, what, because I think for a lot of them, they see it as really uh, difficult because they're like, I don't have, and I didn't study finance or I didn't study accounting. And a lot of times I'd say, don't worry about it. You know, in fact, engineering provides you with some real structured thinking that could be helpful almost anywhere. But I'm just curious about your thoughts about finance and engineering. I think I've seen the other side of the story because as I moved from back end, right? So there was a technology center in India in Barclays to being on the front end, right? To being in the financial hub and facing everything here and how things work. I've seen the other flair. So I've seen 
the people who've been in the financial services industry for different roles. Mm. And I had a chat with my friend that day. He said, why should I not think of taking a coding course? Because whatever presentations or whatever task I'm doing, it can be well automated, right? So I think that's how the industry is thinking right now. And it, it is about digital innovation and disruption. And even financial services are really taking the path of automation. So for skills to automate, people are actually going down the career of engineering and more towards the technical skills. And that's how the intersection of financial services and, you know, tech tech basically would play in. So mm. and on the other side, I think that's one side of the story from a friend's perspective. But like my own story is maybe a similar way of one of your students because I did engineering. I started my life in engineering having Google and Microsoft dreams and not Barclays or any other bank's dreams, right? So I think uh, slowly I started realizing that once I'm in the financial services, my tech skills are very, very handy, you know? So you, if I was also in project management, right? Where you have to uh, engage different stakeholders, understand the requirements. So a tech person and maybe someone from ops have to understand each other's language and only then you know we would start speaking the language of innovation so you know having that knowledge as an engineering knowledge or any kind of technical skills definitely is good if you've already started in your career in that but if you're moving in finance at some point or the other it will definitely come handy you'll have a different aptitude to solving problems in financial services is what i think mm. uh, and when it comes to financial services or you know having those uh, jitters around accounting and stuff like that there's plenty of information available right and even i have started taking interest in sites like investopedia because my tech knowledge was not enough. And now I have to amp up my skills, my terminologies that the bank says, and, you know, have a great, complete, holistic spread of, of, of skills. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. If you think about my, uh, my own career, I started as an analyst in uh, 1993. So the idea of upskilling yourself was just, you know, much harder. It's not, not impossible. And, um, I started in Thailand, so, you know, we didn't have a lot of resources here. So every time I traveled, I would pack books into my bags and I would carry, you know, books back from London or Singapore, Hong Kong or US or wherever. And that's, you know, how, how I learned. But, you know, nowadays, as you say, and I think, it, you know, one thing I, I, I did when I went back to do my PhD, you know, I knew I didn't really, I didn't, all I wanted to do was pass the statistics courses and programs at the university. I didn't really want to learn statistics completely, even, you know, at, at an experience level at, as I was at the time. But what I really needed to do was to learn very deeply the specific statistical tools that I needed to do my analysis. And I think what's overwhelming for a lot of young people is they see all of these things you have to learn. And once you get to work, you realize, okay, I just need to know, you know, what are assets? you know, and how do we, you know, or what is this or what is, you know, it's a lot more narrow than what people probably think when they're going in. And that means that the upskilling being available, much more available and not as wide as it appears. It's not that difficult to go into an area like finance coming from a different background and being able to catch up in the areas, you know, it's a lot harder to catch up to say critical thinking. If you don't have critical thinking skills, that may be harder to ca capture than just learn about a balance sheet. I don't know. What are your thoughts about that? Um, I think certifications also help in there mm. because, you know, the starting point is to really develop interest, right? So I would first do, a well, depending on the availability of my time, my interest and how much of a, you know, career aspirations I have in those lines even for say learning anything to do with treasury right i'm i'm fan today at this point of time if i fancy a treasury job mm. will i start 
understanding how it works, yes, I'll, I'll go leverage all the information that I have online. But to aggregate whatever I have understood, I think a certification just gives us more of a power boost. And may, there are chances where we start getting distracted because of all the data available, right, today. So courses, I, I really appreciate that there are loads and loads of courses available. And mm. people who really build those courses have given enough time and energy and a lot of thinking behind developing those courses, right? So if I sign up for my course, that makes me realize that I've already started you know, thinking seriously about it. That's mm -hmm. my first step, right? Moving on, while I'm doing the course, it won't be, you know, continuously clicking to me that how a treasury person actually on the job is doing its job. Mm -hmm. That information that I started seeing on the internet now moved to a course level. The third step in this whole equation is to actually start speaking to people who are doing the job that I want out, out of this course. So for me, I used to really talk to a lot of people and understand what is their day-to-day -day job, how do they work. And I think that is how you complete your learning in any, any, any career, mm. be it finance or be it anything else. When I was joining my college and I had to decide even a college, I would go and stand outside the college, wait for the students to come out and maybe say hi to someone and ask, you know, what is it like to be in the computer field? How are the teachers? What is the placement opportunities that you get out of this college? And that helped me more than just reading about the online information available on the website of that college, then speaking to the students. On so the ground research. Yes. <laughs> uh, if, it, if it was me, I would have stood outside and said, hmm, I wonder if, which school has the most beautiful women. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's what I was saying. I graduated from an all-women's college, so I, <laughs> I could see men like <laughs> men outside the college, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's interesting is I, I also started my career with a management trainee program, which I did with Pepsi, and they rotated me through a lot of different areas. and. In my case, I went to work in operations, even though I studied finance. And I always give a tip, you know, and I want, I want you to think about some tip that you could give to, to young people, but I always give a tip that if you get an opportunity to work in a, an area that's different from what you studied, and it's a good, you know, it's a good enough opportunity, take it. The reason being because just because you studied something doesn't necessarily mean you're good at it or that you like it. And if you go and work in another area, you're going to understand something. And if you don't like it, you can go back to what you studied very easily. But if you go and work in finance, let's say I studied finance and I went to, let's imagine I went to work for finance in finance for three years and I decided I didn't like it. It starts to get harder to make that transition. Not impossible, but you know, and, and I can tell you that when I became a, an analyst in the stock market, I was a much better analyst because I'd been walking the floors, managing, you know, the staff of our factories. And it made me, you know, understand the difficulties. What would be your tip, you know, for young people as they're starting into their, you know, job search, career, that type of thing? Um, I think I have also tried uh, doing a lot of research and things. And, you know, I tried figuring out what are the best ways I think the first few years you can always experiment as you did or I did. And, you know, after a few years, you start realizing what is the best thing for you. Mm. And sometimes you don't even understand that maybe 20 years down the line. But, you know, if you don't experiment, if you don't jump into something, you'd really not know about it. Right. Of course, I mentioned that we have to go and talk to people and understand from their experience. But if I had not joined that college, I would have not experienced it, right? Mm. It was good, it was bad, it was a later thing, right? But getting into that opportunity, getting into that college, getting into that career is very, very important. And of course, uh, for people, if they have an opportunity to have any kind of rotational programs in the career choices that they are making, it is very, very good because 
for me it definitely helped me give get a view of different roles different domain understanding and at the end of the day helping me understand what i like so i started with coding but would never enjoy it enjoyed more on other uh, other roles and responsibilities so mm. only if i did coding i realized that you know it was not meant for me after a few years so keep experimenting would be my first advice right second once you know it you start believing in that you know and there's no substitute to hard work so if you have understood this is something you like try becoming the best in that you know so i would not just try understanding how central banks in india work but i'll try taking examples of five other countries to see how things differ from each other what are the similarities so you know as soon as you start realizing what you're interested in you have to go deeper into that content and there's no substitute to hard work and there are enough and more distractions available to us so my <laughs> third point would be that you know if you are really driven by the idea and you know it's interesting you to know bounds i think you can reduce your netflix viewing to something more you know more 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 uh, because at the end of the day your career will define your trajectory your growth and that that's that's what matters so these are my three advices and i hope it it's it's useful to them that's fantastic and also cutting that netflix probably helps <laughs> I don't I only watch Netflix like you know for an hour at night but uh I normally read books and normally I'll watch a little bit and then I'll read but I used to read a lot more and it it's it's harder to discipline yourself to read with all the you know YouTube Netflix social media all that stuff so that that brings me to another question which is kind of thinking about personal development you know what are the the personal skills or things that have worked for you the personal tactics the personal um things that you know that 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 make you successful what are the things that you either do or that you've developed that help you personally not not necessarily um, they help you professionally but they're more personal development type of things to start with i think um i really focus on exercise and health i think that's a starting point for for everybody and um i was when i was working too hard i would forget about even drinking water and i would yes there it is <laughs> so you know these little things when especially in the starting years you know if you're in a mad rush to prove yourself and you know you just trying to explore and you have so much of energy you also have to understand how to tame that and what are the effective methods and tools to tame tame and you know a channelize your energy i would say so on a personal level i think i started focusing on exercising and health and you know going out for walks and you know even meditation and yoga so my friends would be like you guys for you know old people why i you trying to explore this and slowly i started realizing even like seeing so many books behind you i would not even finish one in a year you know that mm. was when maybe i would watch 100 videos in a day but won't have the focus that is very important so all these things especially meditation started helping me a lot with concentration and focus so you have to identify what skills you lack and what are very effective ways to you know improve that so concentration and focus was one thing which at a personal level was very important for me to thrive and mm. I, i identified tools and methods and a lot of guided meditations as well to you know help me through it that was one aspect um the other thing is i never thought that my curiosity was going any less you know the curiosity is very 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 important to me why this works how this works the what aspect so i always will keep thinking on the what why and how you know and that challenges the way i think so you know challenging yourself every day on a personal level be it why why does the room today like looks like this is there any way better that you know i can place the plants there or this so very little things on a day to day basis and the third thing is that 
you know, you are not alone. So there are so many people and especially coaching, right? Or mm. mentoring kind of a facilities which are available. So it is very important to find the right mentors, right people who can give you advice, not necessarily that they have to be in your same domain or same career that you aspire to be in, but as simple as people who you can relate to and you can talk it out because most of the solutions lie within is what Mm. I believe in. And while you start talking to a mentor, you won't talk such things to your parents maybe, right? Maybe uh, that's that's what I could not find very comfortable talking about my career cho- choices to my mom. So I found the right mentors and that's how, you know, things have started making shape. And also at a personal level, I keep thinking what I want to achieve in five months or four months, mm. then five years. So we have to make small chunks of things because we can't take it so much at the same time. And I would never enjoy the question of where do you see yourself in five years in an interview, because that'll really trickle my mind. And I would be so confused because I've not thought about it. Right. And I would always enjoy thinking from five months or smaller pieces. And that's, that's how I'll, I'll be driven to what I'm doing. So, you know, your mind is too smart to think that, Oh, these five years. Okay. I can, I can, let's see what happens but if i have something for five months i'll I'll completely focus on it i was going to say if they ask me that now i'll say i think i'm going to be alive (laughs) 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 let's hope um okay last question for me is uh, there's a lot of people particularly like you know i've spent most of my more than half of my life has been in thailand and I've traveled all around, you know, Asia. I haven't been to Africa. I hope to get there soon. But <laughs> these days, there's a lot less travel. But there's a lot of people that really do want to make it in the big, you know, cities of London, of New York, of, you know, wherever that place is. And when they look at it, you know, from where they are sitting in, you know, Pakistan or, uh, you know, Nigeria or Thailand, and they think I want to make it. What, what do you think it takes or how do, how do people make that move? I think that's a very interesting one because I think I was on the other side as well. And I was while working from a back end office, I would always dream about how things look from a front office and how things work here. And why is it different? Because whatever I would build from a product level perspective, if I don't know what my consumers are or how the customers use that product, it would not give me that satisfaction by the end of the day, right? Mm. So making that transition was first a function of the drive that I had to understand how the other side of the world looks like. So that if, if, and if that drive is good enough, you know, you start, finding platforms and LinkedIn has been a very interesting platform where at the fingertips, I understand what the CEO of a bigger bank versus a CEO of a startup thinks. Mm. you know, people have become very uh, verbal of their needs, their requirements, their strategies. So start following a few people who maybe have, you know, a hiring kind of a tag in their uh, network, right? Or in their, in their description and keep understanding what is the need that a company has. If, if it's a startup, well and good. And see if it matches with your strengths, because if you're moving geographies and you're moving boundaries, people will only hire you if you're the best in that field. Mm. So, you know, if you have a very average understanding of things, it could be very difficult for you to change countries. And, you know, especially from a job perspective, because now the unemployment rate, because maybe for the current crisis has, has drastically changed in different countries. And each country would try ensuring that they safeguard the interest of their right. citizens. So it's getting difficult by the day or by the hour or by the world worldometer figures, if if I'll be very honest. Mm, mm. And, uh, so if you are if you have the strengths, you start 
focusing on making one skill you know if if you're a java expert or if you are a trade analyst and you're really good in that then yes there could be opportunity and mm. how do you search that opportunity you start following people as many as possible understand different kind of requirements of the post so it's not just one shot right you don't you can't just send someone a message and say i'm interested to join your company you know you have to do a bit of a research on what they want how do they look at their company what are their uh, needs and slowly you'll have at least a context of starting that first conversation with them and you never know that there is supply there is demand to what you can offer and you know that mm. that where that's how things worked for me and the other way to this is you know signing up for a course or like you know any kind of programs be it masters programs be it graduate programs be it mbas and i to be honest i had made some difficult investment decisions in my life and i could not have the money to sponsor my mba and i had told my dad that i would never take more um, you know help any kind of financial help from you so the again but still the urge was to you know change geographies find out a new country start working explore new cultures so if if that drive is too strong you'll definitely start finding your way out and channels like linkedin and i don't want to like advertise that platform but have really helped so a lot of value yeah. there yes absolutely so i hope that <laughs> that that makes sense that does all right so uh we're going to wrap up this talk but i'd like to end it by asking you if you have any parting words for the audience i think i've i've given too much gyan which is english word for knowledge but um, i think in very simple terms uh, and what i would like to share is you know be driven with some idea i've i've taken a road journey to explore the fintech ecosystem of my country i went on a train journey for 15 days and explore what is the entrepreneurial spirit of the country where 500 entrepreneurs come on a train for 15 days straight so you know if there are so many platforms so many opportunities already around you so you just have to feel driven by something and if you're passionate about it you know you'll you'll find the right people or opportunities with yourself that's the first thing the second is like i said there's no substitute to hard work i think hard working would would be my first skill that takes me from point a to point b and then smartness follows so then i can look for that point z where i have to reach with everything so hard work has no substitute the third thing is that leverage the people with experience leverage with people who have some opportunities for you and the world is full of being connected to the right reasons right mm. and the fourth thing would be that take care of yourself because if you're not okay then you won't be able to do anything great so yeah these are my parting words and i hope this helps Fantastic. Well, I know it it helps me. I've learned a lot and it's going to help everybody. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks Andrew. Thank you so much for having yeah. me.